Hello, hello, and welcome to Rachel Paints Poorly. My name is Rachel, and I paint poorly. Today, I'm going to be painting Claude Monet's Impression Sunrise, the first work of the Impressionist movement, and also its namesake. First introduced in 1874 France, the term Impressionism referenced a group of painters living and working in Paris whose work was exhibited together, albeit with an unfixed membership and unshared definition of art theory. Before Impressionism, artists were producing portraits, still lifes, religious, and historical art characterized by dark, subdued color applied with broad brush strokes. Impressionism, on the other hand, depicted everyday scenes of modern life, capturing a moment in time, often painted outdoors, in plain air. The founders of Impressionism include Claude Monet, Edgar Degas, Pierre-Auguste Renoir, Alfred Sisley, Camille Pissarro, Mary Cassatt, and Bertha Morisot. Edward Manet, though active during this time, was never officially a member of the Impressionist movement. The painting style that would become known as Impressionism began in October of 1869, when Manet and Renoir began painting a series of bathers at La Grenouillère, France. Impressionism debuted in 1874 at an alternative to the Salon, the Cooperative and Anonymous Association of Painters, Sculptors, and Engravers, aka a club for salon rejects. Beginning in 1667, the Salon de Paris, or just Salon, was the official art exhibition of the Académie des Beaux-Arts in Paris. Anyone who was someone, or who had hopes of becoming someone, needed to have his work accepted by the jury. The Salon of 1874 had 3,657 entries, with 400,000 viewers. Meanwhile, the Cooperative and Anonymous Association of Painters, Sculptors, and Engravers opened before the Salon, in the vacant studio of the photographer Nader. Their show, held from 15 April to 15 May, had 20 to 30 artists, with a total of 165 works. 3,500 people came to see the exhibition. Monet contributed 12 works, one being a view of Le Havre Harbor, from his hotel window in 1872 or 73, titled Impression, Soleil Louvain, or Impression Sunrise. Later he said of the piece, quote, I was supposed to give it a title for the catalog, since I couldn't very well name it View of Le Havre. I said, write Impression. On April 25th, an article by critic Louis Leroy appeared in the satirical paper Le Charivari, titled Exhibition of the Impressionists, detailing a fictional conversation between the critic and his friend, Joseph Vincent. Ah, there he is, there he is, Joseph cried in front of number 98. I recognize him, Papa Vincent's favorite. What does that canvas depict? Look at the catalog. Impression Sunrise. Impression, I was certain of it. I was just telling myself that since I was impressed, there had to be some impression of it. And what freedom, what ease of workmanship. Wallpaper in its embryonic state is more finished than that seascape. Of course, Leroy's jab stuck and the movement became known as Impressionism. And so without further ado, let's get started, shall we? All right, let's get started. I have canvas here, I have the paints, brushes, I did look up how to get rid of that stiffness and it turns out it was sizing. So we got that rinsed out, ready to go. And then I have the palette here and I put some saran wrap over it because I thought that would help keep it clean. I have the painting pulled up on the laptop. So we're gonna zoom in on that as needed and we're gonna get started. I'm a little nervous, but how bad can it be, right? All right, so let's get going. I think normally Monet would have put a little bit of just some color down on the canvas. And I know he used um, grays and purples, so we're gonna do a little bit of gray. Ooh, 
that is actually darker than I thought it would be. Get some white out. Titanium white. That's looking better. We're just gonna. Ah, okay. That's not a whole lot. All right, so it looks like we have some darker colors over here on the right and like some grays and then we've got like the lighter colors peeking through here and then here's the water. So we're gonna do probably those darker grays here first and then we'll move into those lighter sky colors and the water colors. So I'm seeing blue, blues in there. Um, yeah, I'm seeing blues. So I'm gonna add some dark, darker. This smells like a gray blue a darker grayish blue so I'm gonna try some Prussian blue Prussian blue and some well the gray was dark I didn't really buy a whole lot of white I'm kind of disappointed I didn't buy more white When Monet painted, he said that he would see, other people saw shapes, but he didn't see shapes and things. He just saw color, almost like if you, if you squint and just the colors that you see from squinting. That's what he saw, and then he would paint that as he as he saw it, which I think is quite fascinating. Really, it was definitely a a new way of of painting. People didn't really paint like that. It was more mimetic, right? Like you're trying to paint exactly what you see and then to just break it down with those thick dabs of color quite fascinating when I painted this when he was about 32 years old so off only by a year I got you beat by a year Monet I'm painting this when I am 31 so Watch out, here I come. He draws the, pulls the blue over. I don't actually know how, ooh, that's darker than I wanted it to be. Oops. Let me see, he has the blue extends down here.
when they would mix the colors on the canvas as he went along which I haven't exactly done I did do some mixing on my canvas but that's because I want to okay so we've got let's see if I can zoom in on this a little bit yeah so he has grays and blues just sort of wiped up and down in different areas on the canvas so we're gonna try that looks like there's a little bit of purple in there too get that in there just a tiny bit. I don't want to be slapping a bunch of purple, but you can see how there's that darker color over here. I like that. Blend that in here. Ooh, that's dark. That is dark. That is a lot darker than I wanted. I want light gray. One of the difficulties of painting in plain air the way that Monet did was you have a relatively short window of when you can paint outside and the sun is where you want it to be. So what Monet did to kind of get around that problem, ooh, that is a lot darker. That is dark. That is really dark. That is not really what I wanted to do. Not at all. That is really dark, okay. Ooh. Anyways, what Monet would do is he would work on one canvas at a time and he would set up in a specific spot and he would time it. So when the sun would pass from a specific place like over a specific leaf once it was past that leaf then he would stop painting and he would have to come back to it multiple times a day and multiple days until he was satisfied with the work and he said that the the trick was knowing when to stop when to stop painting because theoretically the light is the same um, every day at a specific point in time and so you could come back and work on it multiple days multiple sessions and he claimed to have I think 16 to 18 canvases that he was working on at a time in his garden at Giverny or on his boat and he would take it out and he would row and paint and he would have multiple canvases that he would work on and he would stash around his garden or on his boat and he would bring them, pull them out as the time went on. And he also worked in a series. So he'd have a series of poplars, a series of haystacks, a series of cathedrals, etc. And that's what he would work on. Now, if that was the case, what he claimed, which I don't see why it wouldn't be unless he was just romanticizing things a bit, but if that was the case, then he had more, he would have had more canvases, but they think that he burned the ones that he wasn't quite satisfied with, which would make sense if you stop and think about it.
okay, yeah. Doesn't look exactly like it. Surprise, surprise, but I, I can see it. I can see it. I don't know about y'all, but I can see it. And that's really all I'm hoping for. I was hoping that it wasn't just a complete disaster. Um, I think I'm going to do the sun next. Yes, we're gonna do the sun. We are going to do the sun. Interestingly enough, the sun, if you look at a black and white version of this, the, I think it's the hue is the same as the rest of the painting. It's not just like you're watching an old timey movie. There's the sun. Here's the reflections. Yeah, that looks like, that looks like the sun. Sort of, you know what this is. There's the sun. Oh, and it's a lovely day. It's a lovely day here with the sun. Now I am going to do the boats. And then you can see sort of the factory in the background. So we're going to add that. It's dark, but it's also, it has blue and green in it. So I'm going to go, I have the gray and the white. I'm going to add some blue and maybe a little bit of, oh, hooker's green. Okay. I'm going to do the one over in the foreground first because it's darker so I'm thinking I'll push that darker pigment here and then I'll use the lesser pigment to kind of fill in the other one so wish me luck Okay, and then we're gonna add a little bit of blue, light blue, to do these buildings and shapes in the background. And like Monet, I need to figure out when to stop. And that's the thing. Just one more, one more bit of color, one more bit of paint. And the next thing you know, your canvas isn't what you wanted it to be. Okay, I think there it is, Impression Sunrise. Thank you so much for watching. Thumbs up and share with a friend if you like this video. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. Until next time, bye.